Hello? It's me, Lyric, your architectural artist. I am here today to show you all how to prepare Sloppy Joe using jackfruit. Now, some of you that uh, follow me on Facebook on Let's Cook at Home, uh, you've heard me keep talking about that I'm going to do this. Well, today is the day. All right. So what I'm going to do first is just give you what you're going to need. Okay, because I still have things that I need to dice and chop up, so I'm not going to make you suffer through all of that. So what you're going to need is, you're going to need your can of jackfruit. Okay, then I'm going to read off of my list what you're going to need. Alright, um, you're going to need a fourth of a cup of ground flaxseed. Alright, you're going to need your can of jackfruit, uh, two purple onions. Uh, you're going to need a can of uh, mushrooms. Alright. Uh, you're going to need your capers. That's here. Alright. You're going to need your uh, red pepper. The flame roasted ones. These, they come in a jar. Okay. Then you're going to need your dried mustard. That's that there. You're going to need... Uh, one teaspoon of that, okay? So that's why I have that there. Uh, I have here a bundle of cilantro, but I don't have any here today. I didn't go to the store. So I'm going to use dried cilantro, all right? So we're, we're probably going to use, I don't know. I'll tell you when we get ready to do it. But you're going to need some dried cilantro if you don't have the fresh. If you have the fresh, just use the whole bundle and chop it up, stems and all. Chop it up as fine as you can get it or put it in your food processor and, and use it that way. If not, then we're going to roll with the dried today, okay? Um, you're going to need a can of your diced tomatoes here. I already opened mine up, so I have to be careful. But you'll need your diced tomatoes, um, some ground garlic. You have... I didn't mean to say garlic. I meant to say ginger. So if you have uh, fresh ginger, uh, I don't even have an amount. So I'm probably just going to run it run it across the grater. And, and that's probably an optional flavor for you. If you don't want to do that part, you don't have to do that. You know me. I like layers of flavor. So I use a lot of different ingredients um, and marry them together. Uh, I understand that everybody doesn't cook that way. you got four or five seasonings and you use that and that's how it goes down. That's not the way I rule. So keep in mind that some of these ingredients are optional. Okay, you can switch them out for something else. It's sloppy joe. It's not like you know we about to feed the queen of England. Not that she would probably eat sloppy joe. But anyway, um, I have here a, a mini the radishes. They come in little sticks. Um, I don't have any radishes and little sticks. I only have uh, my radish, your radishes. And I already cut these in half. But I'm going to put these in the food processor and grind them up. Again, this is another optional ingredient. I like them because I like a little crunch when I'm eating my sloppy joe. Um, you're going to need your can of sloppy joe mix. Okay, so... Sloppy Joe, Manwich, whatever, whichever one you want. Um, normally, I would make that part from scratch, but I don't want to. Okay, this is something that I like to do quick. You know, uh, the next thing you'll need is a fourth cup of hemp seed. You know, I always want to throw some healthy in there. If you don't have that, fuck it. Don't worry about it. Um, one tablespoon of honey. Okay, you're going to need one teaspoon of cumin so it's the same as your dried mustard okay and then you're going to need your coconut oil I, I put down a fourth of a cup but you know that's up to you I'm going to use the coconut oil just to fry my onions in okay so however much you use it doesn't have to be exact and a cinnamon stick I forgot that Need a cinnamon stick. And that's it. You get your bread. Um, 
get your bread. This is the bread I like to use with it, but you can use regular sandwich bread. But it's, it's going to be thick uh, and really kind of messy. So you really don't want to go with a cheap a cheaper bread, a thin white slice of bread. You really don't want to go with that with this unless you're going to toast it to give it some toughness to it. Um, because it's gonna, you're going to need a bread that can hold it, all right, and soak up all the yummy juices in it. So you don't really want to go with a, a, a cheap quality of, of bread for this one, okay? And then um, I like just mayo on mine. You may just eat yours just the way it is on bread or whatever, but I like mayo on mine, okay? And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up jars and get up oh, sea salt. I don't think I put that on here, but you're going to need some salt, okay? Um, and I also use a little bit of cayenne pepper, but again, this is me. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up everything, get stuff diced up and chopped up. You're going to want to cut up your uh, red bed peppers in the jar. You're going to want to dice up your stemmed uh, mushrooms if you want to. Maybe you want your whole. That's on you. I like my diced up a little bit finer, and I'm also going to put in some uh, yellow bell peppers. I got a bag of them. Remember I told you all that when you get peppers and things, to chop them up, put them in the freezer. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use this whole bag. I, I, I would imagine that's probably half of a cup. So I'm going to use that. And any other vegetables that you want to throw in there, that's up to you. Okay, so I'm pretty much just giving you the... The, the foundation of what you want to build this with, okay? So, let me get the dicing and slicing and chopping and whatnot, and then I will come back and we'll put it all together, okay? I'm ready to get this cracking. I have my coconut oil in my pan, and I got it warming up, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut my onion. Now, I went ahead and saved this part because... Um, if you don't have one of these, this is awesome. It's called the Veggie Pro. It really is the bomb. Um, it saves you with the Dyson and all of that. So um, I like it. I think I've used it in another video. Um, I can't remember which one, but I use it in another video. And I really like this thing. So I would say get you one of these Veggie Pros. They don't even cost that much, okay? They really don't. What you spend on a drive-through meal you could buy one of these okay because the key is we want to try everything you can't do fast okay some meals you just can't cook fast you have to take your time with them if you want that love to come through um, but when it comes to prep onions dicing slicing and all of that try to get you some tools that you can speed that process up because I really think that's the part that um, people really don't like to do uh, it's an enjoyment for me you know, I, I, I don't mind the dicing and the slicing and whatnot, but I also like gadgets, so this was right up my alley. So again, I'm just going to show you in case you didn't see uh, the other video, because I don't know which, what order I'm going to put these up, how I'm going to post them, okay? So if I didn't post up the video with me using it, then we're going to do it in this one. But the little thing locks, so it sticks to the surface, it's got a suction cup on the bottom, and you just take your onion. And I have this on thin spiral. I'm going to switch out. This is ribbon cut. So it has three different blades uh, with different sizes in it. So we have a ribbon cut, a thin cut, and a thick spiral. I'm going to go with the thick spiral on this one. Okay. So we're going to switch these blades out. My oil is still warming up, so it'll be great. By the time I do this, I got my candle lit. I don't know how well it's going to do because the candle is going out. But we're going to roll with what we got. So let me get a plate. Okay, and I'm going to set my plate here. And then you're just going to stick that onion in there really good. Hold the handle on it and just turn it. back and it'll leave a little core out like that 
move that to the side and we're going to put the next one in. We just pull this part off. Yeah, this onion, this uh, candle is not doing its job. I don't think I have it close enough for what I'm doing. I'm going to move it over a little bit closer to me because this candle is really, <laughs> this onion is really going to work on my eyes. Hold on, let me do this with my eyes closed. Let me try. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I ain't gonna make it. I have to come back. I ain't gonna make it. It's killing me. <laughs> oh my God, it's killing me. All right, I'm back. <laughs> the onion was not playing with me at all. I think I, I don't have a, the candle has to be bigger. I think when I used to use it before, I had a stand that was higher. So I'm gonna have to remember that next time because that almost took me up out of here. All right, so let me put my oil back on the stove. It's still hot so I went ahead and diced up uh, spiraled the, the two onions so I'm going to go ahead and put those in the skillet now. You just want to make sure that they're all layered and covered in there, okay? So what we're going to do next is the parts that were left, I'm just going to go ahead and, and cut those real quick. All right, because you know I don't believe in wasting. So we're just going to cut it. Here's the other part. We're just going to cut it. How it's cut doesn't matter. Okay, and then this is the little core part from when you were holding it in there that holds it in place. It just gives you this little core. I just go ahead and cut that up too. Okay, and I'm going to use my pastry scraper and lift it right up and put it in there too. Alright, now this is the time I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle in my sea salt. Okay, and that should be enough. I shouldn't need any more of that. I'm going to go ahead and put in my cayenne pepper. Now, I didn't say that before, um, but like I said, this is a personal taste of mine. I just like a little bit of heat. Just a little bit. I don't want too much, but just a little bit. And I'm going to stir that up. And I'm still making sure that I have it have the onion spread throughout the pan. Okay? So next what we're going to do is just, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is get this onion bomb away from my eyes and drop it in the soapy water. Alright? Just put that there. Okay? So what we're going to do next is, this was our jar of roasted peppers. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut them in ribbons. Okay? So I'm not dicing them, I'm just cutting them in ribbons. I figured I would go ahead and do this um, so you can see why the onions were cooking. Alright, and I'm just cutting them in ribbons. Now, another jar that I had bought, I don't know if this is the same brand that I bought before, but it, it only had two, one pepper in it, okay, and they had cut it in half. This one has multiple peppers in it, but they're a lot smaller than what I had. So I'm just cutting them in ribbons. Okay? That's all. Just like that. And they smell really good. Alright. And you'll pick these up. They should be on the shelf close to wherever your um, your the pickles and relish and uh, horse relish and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is what, where they are. You would think they would be with the tomatoes and uh, tomato sauces. I didn't. I don't ever see them there. At least not in the store that I go to. I don't see them in that area. They're over with uh, vinegars and relish and pickles and 
that's where they are, okay? And you'll probably find uh, your capers over there too. Um, I have found capers in both sections. So I found capers where they have diced tomatoes and I've also found the capers uh, close to these too. Alright, so we're just going to get all the nice dice. And the other reason why you want to add in more veggies to this is to give it some some weight because you're not cooking with ground beef all right or ground turkey you're not using meat so you're going to want to substitute veggies for that okay so you want to give you give yourself something to chew on the jackfruit I'm going to cut that up next it's, it's not that much of it in the can so I'm going to show it to you and I didn't cut it either so you'll see what it looks like because I've had people ask me you know what does it look like what does it taste like so we're going to get to that part right now all right so we're just going to move these over all right and then this is your jackfruit all right so to me I said it looks kind of like tuna or chunks of chicken in a can. That's what it looks like to me. Okay? So what you do, you just, it, it's soft. And you just smash it like that. Okay? You just want to smash it. You can cut it if you want. But, uh, I like to put my hands in the food sometimes. Alright? And that's all you're going to do is just squeeze it. And it, it just comes, it looks like chicken or tuna in a can. Let's see, I don't know if I tasted it without. Mm. It tastes like plain with nothing on it. It kind of reminds me of an olive, maybe. It's not as salty as an olive, but it has salt on it. I can taste the salt. Um, the texture is, is softer than chicken in a can. Um, it's softer than tuna in a can. Okay? So it has these seeds in it, and I think that's what I've seen people chopping up with the seeds. And the seeds are soft, too. So we're just going to give it a rough... A rough chop. Alright, I'm going to give it a rough chop. But as you can see, it's not that much of it here. So that's why you want to fill that those gaps in with some vegetables. Okay, so that's why I use two entire onions. Uh, because we, we're not, we, we're, we're not using meat. Okay, so we're just going to rough chop it. Just make sure all your big chunks, and it's got, like I said, it's got little seeds in it, um, but they're really soft. But not soft enough that if you squeeze it, it might shoot across the floor. So we just rough chop it. Let me check on these onions. Yep, they're ready. So now it's time to go ahead and add in our jackfruit. So they're nice and wilted. They're nice and clear. Um, they're, I'm not cooking them to brown them. I'm just cooking them till they're translucent, so they're clear. Okay? Just soft. That's what I want. Okay? So they just like that. Alright? So now, I'm going to turn this fire up just a little bit, because now we're about to get down to the get down. Alright? Because this is not a meal that should take a long time. Alright? The longest part is the prep. Is dicing, slicing, opening up cans. That's what the what the deal is. Once you get past that part, putting all the ingredients in the skillet, it's up. All right. So now we're going to add in. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy a a a burner. And I used to have one at my other house, but I'm going to buy a burner that I can cook right here in front of you so you can see. Because I really hate turning my back to you. Um, and I don't like that you can't really see what's going on in this skillet. 
So we're going to scoop this up and put that in the skillet. Alright, we're going to put it all in there. And to me, the jackfruit has the ability to take on the taste of anything, much like chicken and tuna. Whatever you season it with, it, it'll come to life. Well, I would say less than tuna. Tuna still has that tuna smell. But chicken, especially chicken in a can, it'll take on any flavor that you get. Alright? So we, we're going to add that in. Alright? And now we're going to go ahead and put our seasonings in. Alright, so at this point I'm going to sprinkle in a little turmeric. And I don't know if I put that on the ingredient list, but this is something that I like personally. I kind of add turmeric to almost everything. I add it to my uh, coffee in the morning. If I drink water, I add it to it. And then I'm going to sprinkle in a little chili powder. And I don't think I said that either. And I did say cumin, but I'm not measuring it. Okay, I already told you what the measurement was. And it looks like I got just enough of that one-fourth in there. Okay, so it's over for that. And then I have a little thyme. Alright. So I'm going to sprinkle in. It smells good already. <laughs> I'm going to sprinkle in a little thyme. And you want to grind it in your hands if you're going to use it. Uh, to release the oils in it, you do the same thing if you use rosemary. Alright, and we're just going to stir that up. And make sure everything gets some flavoring on it. Alright, and I'm going to let this cook for about... I'm going to let this cook for about 15 minutes before I add in anything else, okay? So we got your onions, your jackfruit, and your seasonings in here. And you're just going to spread that around because we want those seasonings to really get embedded in that jackfruit, okay? So I'm going to put a lid on it as soon as I can find a lid for it. I don't know what I did with the lid. I, uh, I washed dishes and I hid it somewhere. But anyway, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go ahead and let this cook for 15 minutes with the lid on it. Okay, as soon as I find... Ah, here it is. There we go. So I'm going to let that cook for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and we're going to add in our uh, other ingredients. Okay? All right, we'll be back. All right, I'm back. So we're going to go ahead, take the lid off, turn the fire down a little bit, because now it's, it's going to be time for it to simmer, okay? So it's nice and soft. Look at it. See that? It smells really good. So we're going to go ahead and add in the rest of our ingredients. So we're going to add in our mushrooms at this time. Okay. I'm going to stir that up. And then we're going to go ahead and add in our fourth teaspoon of mustard seed or ground mustard. Looks like I went over. It'll be all right. Okay, and then I'm going to add in my fourth cup of flaxseed. I'm going to add in my radishes. Maybe you want to use carrots. Okay, or maybe you want to use broccoli. You know. Uh, you could be creative with, okay? And I don't, I very, very rarely make anything 
the same exact way every single time. Okay, I use what I have on hand if I don't have it already in the house. If, you know, if I didn't go to the store and specifically go get these things, I use what I have in the house. Okay, so like we didn't have any any fresh cilantro, so I had I had to go with the dry. But um, I said all that to say you don't have to use radishes if you don't want to. Okay, what you can't skip is jackfruit. Okay, you can't skip that one because that's what the whole the whole meal is about the jackfruit. Okay, so I'm going to take this top off. All right, and we're going to add in, I'm going to see what a, a tablespoon, a teaspoon looks like. I'm going to add in two. All right, so I'm going to add in two teaspoons of uh, dry cilantro. And we're going to get that a stir. Now, my oil and all my liquids in here are drying out, all right? So now, I'm going to add in my diced tomato. Juice and all, so I didn't drain it. Get at a really good stir. Alright? Be nice to it, you know, just gently turn it, remove it. And then we're going to add in what? My yellow diced peppers. And I'm going to add in that whole thing and toss that bag. And then I'm going to also. Go ahead and put in my roasted red peppers. All right. And we're going to get out a nice gentle stir as well. Make sure everything is blended all nice. I'm going to have to bring you over so you can see this once it starts really cook. Alright, so I got it blended pretty well now. And I think I got everything in here. Yeah, the capers, the cinnamon stick, and the sloppy man which mix, sloppy joe sauce uh, will go in next. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add in my Sloppy Joe mix. Well, I got man, which I keep saying Sloppy Joe, man, which mix. Okay, and we're going to get us a really good as well because you want to make sure it's all blended nice and evenly okay now I'm going to go ahead and add in my cinnamon stick and my capers. And we're going to go ahead and add in our honey. Now I'm not going to measure it, but if you want to measure yours, it's a tablespoon of honey. And that's it. So we're just going to blend those last ingredients really good. 
be very gentle with it. You don't want to fling it all over the place, alright? This is good stuff here. You don't want to waste it and have it all splattered on the wall. But just be real nice to it and just stir it real, real nice. And really you're not stirring it, you're folding it. So we're lifting and turning. Alright, lifting and turning. Get you a really good spatula. I really don't like the spatulas where the top comes off. I hate them. They are so gross to me. They get stuff all embedded on the inside. And even when you wash them, they get mold and fungus in there. It's disgusting. Try to get you one that's got sili the silicone all the way down. Alright, just a whole one. I got these at Walmart. You get two of them. You get one a little bit smaller. But I got two sets of them. Um, because I really like them and uh, I use them a lot but you just want to fold it okay just fold it be nice to it just fold it over just tuck it in all right just tuck it in a little bit all right now I got this I think blended pretty well so what I'm going to do next is just give it a little taste to see because it's really going to come alive because we're going to let this cook for another 15 minutes or so with the lid on it until it starts to really bubble and boil and that's what we want to happen but you want to do that with the lid on it and do not take the lid off once you put it on that's it okay so let's just give it a little taste right here it's good it's good. I didn't add my ginger. See how I missed stuff? <laughs> I miss things. My taste buds was like, wait a minute. Something is off here. And the ginger has a really warm sensation to it and that's why I like to add it. It, it kind of brings that tartness of the tomatoes down and it just kind of warms it up a little bit. You know, it just kind of cuddles with it. It just brings it together really nice. So that's why I like to add that ginger in. So I'm not just throwing in ingredients just to be throwing in ingredients. I really do have a method to my madness. There's a reason why I add the ingredients that I add. Um, certain ingredients just dance well together. Um, they, they lift each other up. Some of them, you know, it has a little undertone to it. And the layers, if you eat your food slow and take your time with it, to taste the different layers is an experience, you know. But if you only got one or two flavors to choose from when it's in your mouth, who wouldn't want to wolf that now? You know, you want to hurry up and get done with that. But when you take, take the time to layer flavors, let it simmer, cook, marinate, and all that deliciousness just unfolds in your mouth. It's an experience. Okay, now I also add the ginger and the honey um, so I don't have to put in brown sugar to give it a little sweetness. See, I like the sweet and tangy of, of, the, of the mixture. See, it's already starting to bubble, so I need to go ahead and put this lid on it. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit more and let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And then I'm going to come back, give it a stir, we'll taste it again, and that should be it. Now, please understand that this is the type of meal that will taste even better once it takes a nap. Okay, once it goes to sleep overnight and wakes up the next day, it's going to taste even better. And the day after that, and the day after that, if you have any left, each day it will taste a little bit better. Okay, so if you want to get you some when you're first making them, just put you some in the freezer and just leave it for another day. You know, you just may feel like chewing on a little piece that day. Then you already have some on deck. All right. I'll go ahead and check on it now. 
I turned it off and I had already gave it a nice final stir. Uh, it's starting to thicken up now. One of the things that I forgot to add in, and it's no problem, you could even add it in at this point, was the, um, the hemp seeds. See, the reason I add the hemp seed and the flax seed, make sure you get the ground flax seed. Because there's two different. You go to the store and you'll see flax seeds. And they're brown. They look like, I don't know, little seeds. Okay? That's not the one you really want. You want the one that says ground flax seed. So it's powdery. It almost looks like brown sugar. That's the one you want to add in here. Okay? It's absorbent. Alright? So the, the hemp seed, you want the shelled hemp seed. Again, it's, it's going to be ground up, but it won't be the consistency of brown sugar. Um, I don't know what what other example I can give you that it looks like other than to just show you. But, um, hold on. Okay. This is the kind that I use. So, if you can see the picture, I'm not ready to open this. I just used up the last of the other one, and I'm not ready to open this one just yet. But it, it kind of looks like, um, I don't know, ground up Rice Krispies. <laughs> I don't know what to, what to say it, it looks like, but it, it's absorbent. Okay, so a lot of times, yes, I like to add in that healthy element, but depending on what it is, sometimes I'm adding it in because I know it will absorb some of the, the liquid, okay? So what's going to happen with this, the longer it sits, that flax seed and the hemp seed will absorb more of the liquid and it will give it more stability when you put it on, the, on your bread, okay? Uh, it, it won't be falling all over the place. See, right now it's still hot, so it's still kind of loose. Uh, but if I let this sit, by the time I go to work tonight, it will have firmed up some more. You know, it's not going to dry it out, but it will just solidify it a little bit more. And, and you can work with it better. So, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on my bread and just give this a taste. But, um, like I said, I'm ready to lay down. So, I really didn't want to, I don't want to eat a whole lot. I made this for my for work tonight, all right? Um, the other thing too is that cinnamon stick, make sure you keep it embedded in your mixture and not floating at the top, okay? You want it in there. So when you're stirring, you want to mix that flavor that is given off around. You want to stir that warmth around because it's another warmer. It warms things up for you, okay? So make sure you keep that buried underneath. So like I said, it's still hot. It's still steam coming off of it. So I'm going to put just a little bit on my bread. All right. And it's just the, and I probably won't even finish off this. I just want to show you uh, what it looks like. This is a uh, uh, organic whole wheat bread. So it's really solid. Um, it's not as, not this, all right? With this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut me a piece, and then I'm going to spoon out, pull out the bread, and then fill it in with my, my, my sloppy joe mix. And then that's how I eat it. And then I just, whatever falls off, I just use the bread to, you know, pick it up. But that's how I fix that, okay? So, we put the lid back on it and let it sit until later on. It'll sit for a few hours. But we'll just give it, give it a nice, give it a little taste try real quick. So, I put a little Just Mayo. The Just Mayo has no eggs. It's a non-GMO. Um, it's a good for you type of mayo. Um, I spread a little of that on there and then I hit it with a little mustard. So 
Oh my god. <laughs> this is so damn good. I think this one is better than the first one I made. Wow. Mmm. This is good. This is really gonna be good after it takes a nap. And then tomorrow when it wakes up. Oh, this is fantastic. Jackfruit. Get you a can of jackfruit. I'm going to think of some other recipes or go online and find some other recipes to try with the jackfruit. But for starters, the jackfruit sloppy joe is in there. Okay? So, um, that's it. That's all I got for you. Okay? So, like I said, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself first. Take care of each other. Keep a lyric in your heart. Alright? So, make sure you subscribe so you get the new videos as I post them out. I got about two, three more videos that I have not done the edit for. So, they'll be coming out pretty soon, okay? Oh, I'm spitting shit? God damn. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> it's time for me to go back and take my nap. So, anyway, take care of yourself, alright? And I'll see you all next time. Um, you know, write me. Tell me how your recipe came out. If you try something different, let me know what you did, you know. Um, take pictures of it, you know. Post them on my Let's Cook at Home page on Facebook. Uh, if you don't follow me there, follow me there, okay. And that's where I post a lot of uh, recipes and uh, little videos and things uh, that I find throughout the week. And uh, you can write there, you know. And you can also write in the comment box below, okay. So, till next time. Peace.